Always. We ask the questions. What is needed in the world? The landmark conviction of Jean-Pierre Bemba for war crimes and crimes against humanity by the International Criminal Court in The Hague has now been overturned. And Mr. Bemba cannot be held criminally responsible under Article 28 for the crimes committed by MLC troops during the CAR operation. The former rebel leader and vice president of the Democratic Republic of Congo has spent nearly a decade behind bars. He was sentenced to 18 years in prison after sending his militia to the Central African Republic to help put down a coup attempt. They conducted a reign of terror. A rampage of looting and killing of civilians followed, including the mass rape of hundreds of women. But a majority of the judges ruled on his appeal he could not be held responsible for the actions of his fighters. His lawyers argued successfully the fighters were no longer under his command after they crossed the international border. His militia, known as the Movement for the Liberation of Congo, has now been transformed into a political party, opposing the rule of President Joseph Kabila. He has called an election which is due to take place in December. I'm David Chater in Belgium, the country that was the former colonial ruler of the Democratic Republic of Congo. Ever since it gained its independence in 1960, there's never been a peaceful transfer of power in that country. The senator is returning from Belgium to his homeland to register as a candidate in the presidential elections. Jean-Pierre Bemba talks to Al Jazeera. Jean-Pierre Bemba, thank you very much for talking to Al Jazeera. Thank you. I'd like to start with perhaps the hardest question for you. During those 10 years inside, you were always convinced that you didn't have criminal responsibility for the atrocities committed by, by your militia. You were convinced always that you were going to come out an innocent man. But during those 10 years, did you have any feelings about your moral responsibility for what happened? I think that, of course, I have a lot of sympathy for all the people in, uh, in Central Africa, uh, in general Bangui, and uh, they're my brothers, sisters. And of course, the, if there are any victim, uh, I'm, uh, uh, I'm very sad and I'm uh, supporting them in uh, all this, uh, the pain. But uh, as you say, I've been acquitted uh, by professional judge, uh, by experienced judge, honest judge. And um, that's what I can say, that's all. The justice has been said. And when, when you head back, are you going to have a special message? Are you going to actually say that you feel sorry for what happened, that you have sympathy for the victims, and you want to start on a clean slate? Of course, I have a lot of sympathy for all victims, whatever victim it is. But uh, what I have to say is that I'm going back to Congo. I'm not going to Central Africa. And uh, as a Congolese, as you know, I'm a senator in Congo and a former vice president. So. As the chairman of my political party and the next candidate for my political party, I'm going to take part of uh, the Congolese uh, politics. Before your arrest, you spoke to one of my colleagues in Al Jazeera, and you were in Portugal. Uh, you feared for the safety of yourself and your family. Surely you must fear for the, your own safety on your return. What do you feel about that? No, I think that, uh, I remember I met uh, one of your colleagues uh, 10 years ago, he was in Portugal, and I, I talked to him. And <laughs> Uh, as I always say, that uh, I have nothing to, 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 to fear because uh, my conscience was uh, clean and uh, the truth has been said. At the end of the day, the justice has been said. Do you think that uh, President Joseph Kabila will hold the elections in December? Really, I never heard uh, from himself that he will uh, hold the election. But I've never heard that so that he will not hold the election. I just heard that he will respect the Constitution. So, as the guarantor of the Constitution, I will hope that uh, it will make respect the Constitution. Looking at your time in prison, were you devastated by what continued to happen in the Congo? I'm really devastated. I'm very, I'm very sad because it's a disaster. A humanitarian disaster. It's an economic disaster, a finance disaster. I mean, uh, 
Look at the problem uh, we had uh, in uh, Kasai. Uh, the, this uh, massacre made in Kasai. I'm talking about Kinshasa also. Uh, this uh, ADF uh, attack in uh, Beni, uh, around Butembo. Uh, new massacre in Ituri. I remember in uh, 2001, in the March, uh, I have uh, restored the peace and security in Ituri. So I know very well this problem in Ituri. And it starts again uh, a few months ago. Uh, the problem is of the ADF. Uh, we, we fought, I fought uh, the ADF in uh, 2001. Uh, mm when I was uh, in the Beni. So really I feel sorry that all this old uh, insecurity is back now in Congo. The latest UNICEF report that I saw at the beginning of this year said there was something like 800,000 children who don't have homes anymore. They don't have education, they don't have access to health. What are you going to do to give them a future? I think, as you know, we have 800 children. We have also more than 6 million refugees all around the, the country surrounded the uh, DRC. So we should uh, find the best way to bring them back home. And that's what I say, the problem is the security. That's why one of my priority in my program is to restore peace and security. Without peace and security, they will not come back. And I saw the same problem with the children. The children have to be, have assistance in a different way. And the children have to go in school and not to be in a refugee camp or in the street. So uh, I'm very, very, very concerned about uh, this project, yes. How are you going to do that? There have been so many promises to try and solve the situation in the Dem Democratic Republic of Congo, but there's still a huge amount of inter-ethnic violence. That is one of the reasons why I'm a, a candidate for the second time. I remember that I was also a candidate in 2006. So after being a vice president in Congo, I know more than uh, anybody the kind of problem that uh, we are in the opposition, I say, uh, the kind of problem that uh, we face in Congo. So all this uh, crisis and uh, this uh, humanitarian uh, problem, have to, we have to face that one. It is uh, a problem of uh, political will. If we focus, if a government tomorrow say we are going to take care and solve this problem and put uh, the means to solve the problem and to face this problem, will be able to do it. But today, I, don't, I never hear any action from the government today to try to find a solution just to bring the refugee back to Congo. I never heard about it. Just uh, to, 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 to face this problem of the children that UNICEF have uh, focused on, 800,000 children, you know, without family. That is a problem of a political will. So you have to put it on the table of a government. But that's what I say, I'm fighting to, for a new government to be able tomorrow to have a new government through the election. Since the DRC gained its independence in 1960, there has never been a peaceful transfer of power. Do you think there will be this time? I hope so. I still hope so. Even if I know that there are two major problems that we have to solve with the Electoral Commission. The problem of this uh, machine, of uh, elect electronic vote machine. That, that's something that has never been used uh, anywhere in the world. We don't understand why uh, it should be tested in Congo. Even the, the test made with two machines in the assembly, National Assembly and in the Electoral Commission was a disaster. The second main problem we have is this 10 million electors. We are seen without uh, no f fingerprint. Uh, so this problem has to be solved because we go to the election, otherwise what is the, the sense of an election where the day after the vote will be contested? For what? I think Congo needs a stabilization and the stabilization will start with a, a peaceful electoral process. Do you think that uh, President Kabila will be worried that uh, you will focus the opposition forces and change the corruption, change everything about the DRC? Do you think he's really opposed and determined to make sure that you don't succeed? Uh, President Kabila is uh, uh, an adversary, I mean, uh, in the politics. Uh, I think that uh, uh, the most important for me is uh, what the people of Congo want. And uh, if I'm doing politics, is to first solve a problem for the people of Congo. Uh, that is what I'm the most interesting. So, of course, I may understand that uh, some people may be worried about it, uh, but they shouldn't. I mean, <laughs> I'm just uh, someone trying to find solution for his country, that's all, and for the people of his, his country, who are my brother and sister. But uh, you're going to register as a candidate by the deadline, and already the government is saying that uh, you're, not, uh, you're not going to be 
able to be registered, that it's illegitimate for you to be registered as a candidate, that's surely the first problem that you've got. Yeah, but are you surprised that the government in place <laughs> say that I'm not able, so you shouldn't be surprised. Uh, I think that uh, those people in the uh, majority uh, of the government uh, are not the right people able to talk about it, I think. After 10 years in, in, in a criminal limbo, as it were, did you feel that you'd made a mistake, that uh, you should have been there during those 10 years? What did you feel about those 10 years? Were they wasted years or did you, uh, like Nelson Mandela, concentrate your thoughts on what you were going to do when you got out? I will tell you frankly that uh, these 10 years uh, helped me also to think deeply about uh, not just myself, but also my country. Uh, of course, you are not the same person uh, after 10 years. You, 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 the Congo has changed, uh, the, the Africa has changed, uh, the world has changed. So you have to adapt yourself and think for differently. Of course, 10 years more make you be another man also. But it's true that uh, I use uh, all that opportunity time uh, to think about Congo and how to solve a lot of problems in Congo. I wrote uh, a program for uh, a vision for Congo that I will uh, very soon uh, uh, give it to the public. Uh, so um, yes, 10 years uh, can make you be another man. Give me some idea of what that vision is. What sort of measures are you going I to I think have? that um, the contradiction we have in Congo that it's a very wealthy country very wealthy country that we have. But look at uh, the poverty of the people. So it is a big contradiction. So why do we have all this wealth in the ground and the people living in this country are so poor? The main target that I have is to say, look, let's make this wealth that we have be used for the good of the people to improve the life of the people, to give hope to the people, to make them smile again. Is there any way the international community can help? Of course. Uh, UN uh, section in, uh, in the Congo, it is huge. And they help a lot. They help even in security. But today, if a money, the UN were not there, uh, probably that uh, the National Army would have certain problem to stop uh, this question of ADF and all this militia, more than 80 militia exist in Congo. So I think the international community are helping Congo and I hope that they will continue helping Congo. Why is it? But that it is true also that Congo and uh, one day a Congolese government must be able to solve all this problem also. Why is it that a country, and it's so often the case, that has bountiful natural resources, they turn out to be a curse? You can see that uh, a lot of the production is there, but uh, the, the, the result of the revenue is, is not coming back to the the treasury of the country. And that is why it's the problem. Mm. Where is it going? For who? And uh, one of the action to put is to take back all this revenue back to the treasury of the country. And you will see that from this treasury that we can develop the country. And by restoring the security, people will be able, investor from uh, foreign investor, national investor, will be able to come back to Congo and give employment, invest, get their profit, and then I think how Congo will be developed tomorrow. During your 10 years in, inside, the political scene has changed so dramatically, perhaps most of all with uh, President Trump. What's, what's your opinion of the President of the United States of America? I think that is a, the decision made by the American people. <laughs> I cannot give my view or say they do well or not. It's okay. Uh, what I uh, would like to see, because I have not yet seen yet, uh, what is the view of President Trump for DRC? How far and how fast will you start reforming the systems within the country? Are you going to just rely on your own party, or are you going to reach across and try and get a unified government? This country is so huge, 18 million people. We have more than uh, 400 political parties. I don't say that all the 400 are really the main but we have uh, less than 10 main political parties, and I think that we have to work to everybody, and my target is to work with uh, a united uh, government. Do you intend to be the, the main opposition candidate, or will you step aside for somebody else? Both solutions. I will present my program, my plan with the others, and uh, if I'm not the best one, I will uh, back someone else, and I'm sure I will make him win. 
What message will you have for President Kabila? Just uh, to respect the constitution. Make sure that uh, we keep the stability of the country, the peace in the country, and then make everything be possible to have a smooth transition in this DRC for the next election. Will you reform the security forces? How are you going to pull it together? What is your plan for that? How do we stop the terror that so many children and so many people in your country are feeling right now? Most of the, the people are appointed because of tribal, tribal reason. Mm. Uh, I think it's wrong for the country. I think uh, I will appoint people because of their professionalism and uh, the capacity. And uh, it will be another mentality, uh, uh, completely change in the vision of what should be an army, a police. I tested during five years during the rebellion. Mm. I told all the soldiers, you must be friend of the people. You are here to secure them. You must fear the people, not the people to fear you. So what would you say to the, uh, the children in the east of the Congo now? who haven't got a home, who haven't got health, haven't got education. What's your message to them right now? That they should have still hope. Hope that uh, something may change before the end of this year in the new government. Education must be free for me, from the primary school until the secondary school. And the government must be able to give and to provide to the children free education. Absolutely. That is one of the priority, to put more than 10% of the, the, the budget in the education is not a luxury. What are you going to do about the judiciary? And do you think that there should be any charges brought against your predecessors? Justice should be independent. And the term of independence is very important because it's an institution and it, can, it cannot be led by the government. It should be completely, a body completely independent must have the means to say the law independently. That is really, for me, what is the most important. Why? Because you cannot have even investor coming in Congo or investor inside Congo if you don't provide a transparent justice and a justice for everybody. That is not the case today. For the predecessor, I will say that uh, he has, uh, he has uh, the immunity as a uh, a former president, and it is prote he's protected by the Constitution. But you're a successful businessman yourself. Uh, do you think you can get the inward investment into the country that's needed with such an unstable security situation? That's what I, I keep telling you, that one of my first targets is to restore security and peace in Congo. Mm. Because nowhere in any country, no serious investor will come if there are no peace and security in the country. What do you love most about your country? What have you missed most about the country? I will say the contact with the people. The fact that I was uh, in Laek in ICC couldn't allow me to go and meet and be with the people. So in that case, when you get back, are you going to go on a tour of the whole country? Not this moment. We are not yet in the electoral process. But of course, keep contact with the people and uh, be with them, be in touch with them, yes. Be in contact with them, talk with them face to face. What's your first priority then when you land? You know that uh, I lost my father nine years ago. I couldn't bury him. So my first duty is to see uh, his grave. The second thing is to go to the Electoral Commission and I gave my, uh, my paper to be able to be candidate for the electoral process. What action would you take if they refused to accept your candidacy? I would do all my best just uh, it never happened because it will be arbitrary and it will be another arbitrary uh, decision. What can we do? If they reject your application, there's a danger of violence once again, isn't there? I hope not. I hope not. Because it will be arbitrary, and the people will see it arbitrary. So I don't know the reaction, the reaction of the people. I don't know. And if you do make it through as the president, do you think that you can withstand the pressures that every other president has had in the Congo? It's such a powerful position, there is so much to do. Do you think you will be overwhelmed? Do you, how do you think that you'll be able to cope with the pressures of that position? I know that it will not be easy, but uh, the experience that I have will uh, say that I will uh, try to go through and uh, dialogue, and I hope, and uh, determination, 
will make us uh, succeed. I hope so. How much will you draw on uh, other African leaders to help you in that task if you do make it through the elections? Africa is one body. One body in the sense that uh, we share, Congo share nine borders with a different country in, uh, in, uh, in the Central Africa. And I think that it's very important that we keep a, a good relationship with all these borders, first of all, all our neighbor, because uh, we have the same kind of problem. We cannot live uh, by ourselves in a DRC. I think the future of Congo is to be open to first the, the, the neighbor and above the neighbor, uh, up to the north and uh, also the south. We are in the central of Africa. And looking, looking over at the European Union, as you must have read during your time in prison, uh, there are a lot of pressures on the European Union. But do you think the European Union can help you as well, help the Democratic Republic no, of Congo? They help. They help uh, the Democratic Republic of Congo. They continue helping. I know it is difficult for them today because of the government. Uh, we are stopping them to help. But uh, I think they are really willing to help and they will not stop helping. I talk about, uh, I'm talking also about England and America also. Mm. Really the big support, are giving big support in different uh, uh, sectors like uh, humanitarian also, through the NGO, I know they act uh, a lot about this one. And probably they can do more if uh, our government are more open also to, to European Union and uh, to other organizations. What about the United Nations? They have a huge uh, peacekeeping contingent in there. Will you cheer when they finally leave, because you will have solved the situation. Surely it's a mark of dishonor to have so many members of the peacekeeping corps there. Yeah, there are so many. Why? There are so many. Because I think that uh, the, the government are not taking seriously uh, and the consideration uh, of the problem uh, that we are facing and the people of Congo are facing. That's why they are there. They are there to help the Congo. And of course, if they are doing a lot of job and work and uh, duty that uh, should be made by the, the Congolese government. And uh, we have to work with them closely and uh, see now and how this government can, new government I hope, tomorrow will be able to handle all this situation. During your time as Vice President, what do you think the most important political lessons were that you learned? That Congo has a big potential and really with a strong government turn on the way that we should help the people and make programs to help the people. This country in the five years can be another picture, completely another picture. Unfortunately, mm. the government are the ones responsible of insecurity and violence. They could really make things much easier for everybody. The security system, security system is a, a system made just to oppress the people. And that is wrong. And intimidate the people also. Yes. That is really wrong. And finally, looking back, looking back uh, on the International Criminal Court in The Hague, do you have any sense of bitterness about what happened to you? Really, uh, the idea of ICC is a good idea of uh, that uh, there are no impunity. I mean, in the world and uh, for the, the most crime. But uh, also, probably things can be improved in terms of uh, the management. But I wouldn't like to enter at the, at the moment on this uh, aspect. Uh, I prefer to keep it like this. Jean-Pierre Bamba, thank you very much for talking to Al Jazeera. Thank you.